We are coming off our toughest three game stretch of the entire season, but we have seven games left to find out whether or not we will actually be the one seed, two seed, or something else. So without further ado, let's start off by simming these first four couple of games against the Suns, Nuggets, Nets, and Sixers. We're currently one game back from the Thunder. The Spurs have the same record as us, but have the tiebreaker. So we have to outplay them these last seven games. And we have to outplay the Thunder by at least two games. So these games all are crucial. And let's just get right to it. We're going to start by simming this game against Phoenix on the road right after that win against Cleveland. And we do take them down by nine. But the Spurs also won, and the Thunder have won two games since our game against the Cavaliers. So now there are one and a half games ahead of us, and then we have lost to the Nuggets by 20. Two and a half games back now from OKC, and now one game back again from San Antonio. Now I've taken on the Nets, and that's a loss too, by even worse, 124.95. Now with three games back from OKC and one and a half games back from the Spurs, we have to beat Philadelphia because we are running out of time to make up this ground. And we do take down Philadelphia by 40 points. So that makes us four games back from the Thunder with three games left on the schedule. We are one game back from the Spurs, so we actually still can get the two seed. So that is now what we are fighting for. But our next game is against the Thunder, so it's a pretty big one. And I think I still want to watch it just to give us another look at us playing a good team. We did, I believe, watch a game against them earlier this season, but they were missing their two best players. So do they have them right now? I'm assuming so because they've won several games in a row. They've got Kevin Porter Jr. They do have Josh Giddy, Klimov still up there. Eklund, they get Chet back. Rivers off the bench. They are pretty much as healthy as they're going to be. And the award race for Defensive Player of the Year looks like Don Payne might not be able to surpass Giannis. I'm not sure what he would even take. Again, he's got higher steals, higher blocks per game. I'm not sure what else this takes into account. Probably defensive rating, but I'm not entirely sure if there's a way for us to improve that in three games this time to make it better than Giannis. So... I think Giannis might have this one wrap, wrapped up unless Don Payne does some incredible things on defense these last couple of games. But let's dive into this game against OKC. They are fully healthy. We are missing Desumu, but otherwise we have all of our people around. But Desumu is a pretty big guy to miss because we're going eight deep now. So I guess we'll see what happens here. Vancouver comes back home. With no longer a chance to secure the one seed here in the Western Conference, that'll have to be pushed back to next year, perhaps. But the Thunder have secured it. We can still fight for the two seed, though, and that's the goal for these last three games on the schedule. We'll see if we can take down OKC here. Not going to spend, you know, too much time in this game. I'll probably watch about six minutes a quarter or somewhere around there. But, uh, yeah, we'll see if we can take them down because they still are playing all their guys. And I also forgot to look at the box scores of the first couple games we sim, so I'll do that afterwards. But we feed Payne down low, mismatch against Josh Giddy. He fades away and hits the first shot of the game. Chet at the elbow. Jock clock winding down. He goes to Klimov. He pulls the trigger. That one's off. We'll see if he can have another great day like he had last time that we faced them when they were missing Giddy and Chet. Payne over to Anderson. Open three. Missed it though. Klimov takes the screen. Elton Johnson gives up the bucket though. We're tied at two. Anderson, same spot as last time. Can't knock it down here either. Klimov back out. Holmer Green fires. That one's off the mark. Not a good shot, but Eklund gets the board and the foul against Franz. I've got March Madness in my other monitor, folks. That's what I'm watching right now while I'm watching this game. First free throw goes. Number two for Eklund goes as well. 
The great time for some basketball right now, huh? Keldon Johnson off the feed from Wagner. Air ball the three. Why do we do this at least once a game? It's so strange. Giddy over to Porter. Guarded by Hollins. He's going to be forced to shoot. And he missed it. Payne skies for the rebound. Good work. Hollins to Franz. Guarded by Eichland. Now Anderson over to Keldon Johnson. Shot clock's winding down. A fire. That one rattles out. Both teams off to relatively slow starts here. A couple of screens for Giddy. He attacks the rim and then finds Holmgren. He now passes out to Klima for three. And that one's off. Anderson almost thought about pulling up. Hollins will do so. And he misses. Klimov missing that one. Very contested by Keldon Johnson. Good defense. Still just 4-2 to two with over four minutes gone here. Johnson feeds Payne down low against Klimov. His shot's off. Giddy down low. Back out to Porter. Open three. It's good. Payne feeds Wagner. The play for Anderson. They'll fire, and it's good this time. Giddy, nice pass to Holmgren. Against Wagner down low. Behind the back pass as Giddy gets his first points. Payne comes over, sets the screen. Anderson for three again. No good. One for four start from deep. Klimov gets the pass and is blocked at the rim by Wagner. But the Thunder hang on to it. Giddy's wide open. He missed it. Eklund skies for the board and has the putback. Franz. Great pass to Anderson. Trying to get something going here on the offensive end. Those are not accurate numbers. Those are actually swapped for Anderson. He's, he's played a lot better post-All-Star game. Eklund for three, though. Left it short. Anderson pulls down the board. Wagner whips it to Anderson, top of the key. That one's off the mark. We jump a bit further ahead. Five minutes to go here in the first half, and we are down pretty big. We have barely scored. As Rivers has called for a foul against essentially his replacement, Keldon Johnson. Free throw up and good. Down by 15 points. At 21 there in the first quarter and only five so far before these free throws here in this quarter. And they've scored 16. So down by a pretty good amount. Got to play better. Offense needs to pick things up here. We have struggled out the gate in pretty much all our matchups in the first half against these really good teams. Basley goes to Porter. Guarded by Hollins, he attacks, and got it to go. The cutting play for Keldon Johnson down the middle. Two more for him. Screen coming over for KPJ. He goes back out to Lee. He whips it to Rodich for three. Missed it. Hollins to Wellington. Open. And it's good. Baisley. Off the feed from Rivers, can't knock it down. And Keldon Johnson gets to it before it rolls back to Baisley. Screen from Zubots. Keldon Johnson takes it down low, fires between two defenders. Just missed it, it's tipped in though. And that was Zubots, just got a fingertip under it. And it's now a nine point game, 44 to 35. Baisley, second try, just missed it. Dubots, the screen again. Hollins fires, but it's off. And Rivers comes down with the board. Screen from Lee. Porter hesitates, takes it, attacks the rim, lost the handle. Lee gets under it. Back out to Rivers for a three in the face of Wellington. Just off the mark. 
On the other end, Anderson attacks the basket and is fouled. As his layup attempt hit the bottom of the backboard. We'll take the free throws. First one up and good. Anderson not known to miss free throws as he hits both. Rodich swatted by Zubat right to Wellington. He's got a couple of guys there. Nice pass to Kellen and Johnson. We've closed the gap to five. Lee finds Porter. Open for a second and he knocks it down. Carney has checked in for us out there in place of Anderson. Kellen Johnson. The shot's off the mark. We might not even reach 40 by halftime. Wow, a steal by Wellington was thrown right to him. And then he turns the ball over. He lost it. Porter passes to Lee. He missed it. Zubots, thank you for the stop. And can we get, at least get beyond 40 here in the first half? Wellington is fouled at the rim by Rivers. His former teammates. First free throw for him. Up and good. And this free throw gives him nine on the day. 17.1 to go here in the first half. Six point game. Thunder have the final shot here in the quarter. Rivers pass up a wide open three. Just going to wait until there's not much time left. Now he'll take it. He's wide open and he missed it. First half is over. OKC okay, up 47 to 41. All right, well, I think we got to watch more of our starters here because what was that first half? Hollins, wide open. Missed it. The Thunder have called timeout. Not entirely sure why. The half just started 12 seconds ago. Franz Wagner, apparently last three games has not been his best. 16 points per game versus 22 on the season. So there's kind of a preview of those box scores that we skipped over they have brought in Hardy so it looks like Porter must have gotten hurt right there as Giddy gets wide open at the rim just over the fingertips of Anderson Collins he's a baseline lane attacks and missed the layup Giddy attacks the rim and hits the floater Jesus Anderson with it. Pass is cut off. It was trying to go to Hollins. Now we kind of have to rewrite the play call. Screen from Wagner. Anderson fires Josh Giddy in his face. Big mismatch. Hardy against Payne. They go to Giddy though, who's against Hollins. Now he's wide open. And it's good. All of a sudden, Josh Giddy is scoring and not passing. Hollins to Anderson in the paint. That one's off too. Another good defensive play there by Giddy. It was right there in his face. Anderson now only 5 for 14. Holmgren, he knocks it down. It's back to 14. What happened? Screen from Payne. Hollins back to him, but Holmgren's right there to stop him. Payne will still try and fire, and he missed the shot. My God, our shot selection has been awful so far this half. But Holland just got a steal. Not sure what happened, but he finds Anderson in there for our first bucket of the half. Chet to Klimov, top of the key. Now to Giddy for three. Got it. He's on fire. Going to be a cutting play for Anderson. They got to it, but we hang on to it. Hollins, time cutting down, gets to the rim, but he missed the shot. Conan Johnson for three off the rebound. Missed it. That was a pretty decent look too. Holmgren finds Giddy on the cut. Another bucket. This dude has scored like 12 straight points in a matter of four minutes. And we just can't stop him. Anderson spins, finds Hollins. Wide open. That one's off too. Come on, man. We can't keep doing this. We got to show ourselves that we can just have a really good game against one of these good teams. But we are making it difficult for ourselves and all of them. 
We're down by 19 points now. This half has gone horribly. Franz for three. That one's off. It's tipped. Holmgren comes down with it. Four and a half minutes gone here in the third quarter. Klimov misses that one. Johnson gets down low. Liddy right below the rim. It won't fire. Now Franz has it. Off the screen. Out of a shot goes to Payne. Back out. Oh, I thought that was stolen. Shot clock does not reset. Johnson rattles that one in from deep. That is a lucky shot if I've ever seen one. Because that should have been a giddy steal and fast break. But it went right through his hands. Porter behind the back to Eklund. We cover him well. And he missed the shot. I'll watch one more offensive play here in the third quarter. And then I'll show the sim casting between this and the fourth. The play for Anderson. Down the middle. Hollins lobs it. There he is. All right. 14-point game. Anderson's got 19. But let's sim cast and see what happens between now and the fourth quarter. Well, it looks like there's not a lot of scoring going on. We're kind of keeping it in arm's reach, and now we've kind of closed the gap to eight points. Eight minutes to go. Let's watch the rest of it. We hop in. 75 to 67, 807 to go, and the Thunder have the ball. One foul for each team. Let's we'll see if we can mount a small comeback here. Giddy to Klimov, given too much space. Anderson, top of the key, hits it. The assist goes to Wellington. Giddy steps back off a couple of screens and finds Holmgren. Whenever teams set like two to three screens on the same play, we have a lot of trouble dealing with all those switches and just like getting around those off-ball screens. Payne will set one here for Franz. He'll fire a three. That one's off. But Payne, oh, I thought he had that one. Eklund trying to find Giddy. He's wide open. And he missed the shot, finally. Thank you, sir. Anderson finds a lane, just running around to Klimov. Fantastic. Chet with it. Against Payne. Goes to Giddy. He fires, and he hit the shot. Are you serious? And there was a foul, too. That's crazy, man. Giddy knocks it down. Collins is fouled. Trying to take that one all the way to the rim. First free throw. Good. And the second is good as well. About six minutes to go. It's still an eight-point game. Giddy. Another shot, dude. Like, if he gets an open look, the chance of him missing is like 10%. He's got 29 right now. He's owning us. Payne coming over. Hollins takes the screen. He goes just for the shot. And he hits it. Nice work. We got to start closing this gap a bit further. Both teams have shot pretty poorly. Giddy has by far been the best player. Holmgren off the screen. Got the switch to Anderson. And he hits the shots. Eight points. 18 boards for Chet. Four for six from the field. Anderson for three. Open. Missed it. Payne's there on the glass for two. Still an eight-point game, but now it's under five to go. Giddy attacks the paint. Lost the handle. Gets back to it. And he missed the shot this time. Chet gets the board. No. You're kidding after all that. Hollins to Franz. Wide open three. Why can our star players not... Knock down these open looks consistently. I don't know. It's been a problem the last several episodes. Porter for three. That one hits back iron. Bronze comes down with it, but a 10-point game. Four to go. We got to start hitting some shots. Keldon Johnson says, I'll do it for you.
The free throw is up, and it's good. Wow, Klimai was wide open. What happened? What in the world? I actually have to look at this. Like, there's no way that he should have half of the court to himself. Initially, he is guarding Gideon. Franz is guarding Eklund. And then Anderson kind of goes around Payne. But it would have been kind of late. But Keldon Johnson, his help would have been late too. I'm not sure that either of them get there in time. If Franz does not help out, but he is. So, honestly, both guys aren't really doing the right thing here. Except for number five trying to get back on his original man. But, yeah, that's just the bad, the bad call by Keldon Johnson, honestly. We have not made much headway so far. And if we don't get some soon, it's going to be a problem. As Keldon Johnson does it again. Another three-point play opportunity. He's had a handful of those the last couple episodes. His free throw is up and good. Seven-point game. Three and a half to play. We just need a couple of stops. Holmgren for three. Well... There's one, but can we score on the other end? All ins to Anderson. He wants to take it down low, it looks like. Nope, he'll hesitate and now he's fouled. The free throw's coming up. These are, I'm not, actually no, I won't even speak. Anderson got 33? What? He's got over a third of four points? How many shots has he taken? He's five for 15 from deep. But he knocks down both free throws. I was going to say that they're pretty much a guarantee. So it's a five-point game. But he has taken a lot of shots, huh? Giddy trying to work on him now on the other end. Trying to beat him off the dribble. He gets down low and Payne swats the shot. Don't let it go out of bounds. No. You have to hustle for it. Damn it. The Thunder keep the ball. And if they score here, man, it's another... Another possession where we had to stop, but they got a second chance if they score. The shot clock load is not reset. Giddy fires from the logo. He missed it. We get the board. All right. A bucket here makes it a one-score game. Franz against Eklund. Not going to fire. Hollins will, though, for three. It's off. That was wide open, too. The lob up to Klimov from KPJ. Just like that, they make us pay for missing a wide open shot. Screen from Payne. Anderson, out of a shot, finds him at the rim for two. Just like that play in overtime to seal the win. Or to seal the overtime forcing or whatever it was last episode. Same kind of play right there. But a five point game. Holmgren is, no, he's just wide open. There's nobody near him. Come on, man. It's back to eight. Anderson. Now Franz gets two. But we're not getting enough. Screen for Giddy. He takes it. Steps back and fires. Come on, man. We're pretty much out of time. Anderson is just taking way, long, way too long to find a shot. Now he's fouled after he took like 20-ish seconds off the shot clock. Like way too long. The free throws are good though. It's back to six. Giddy out to Porter for three. That's the dagger. It's over. Well... This game has decided our fate. We're going to be the three seed unless the Spurs lost this this game that they had today. Pretty much the only way that we uh, can get above a three now if they lost. What a disappointing game this was. Anderson drops 40 in the loss. 14 for 26 from the field. So actually was very efficient. Keldon Johnson did not shoot very well, but made a couple of plays down the stretch to try and keep us in arm's reach. 
Wellington was all right. Hollins, 6 and 10, 1 for 11 from the field. Franz had four points, two for seven. Sometimes I just don't like what I see from him. He really has not had one of those great games like Anderson has, except when simming he does sometimes. But watching, maybe we have to give him more plays. But even then, some of the shots he takes are pretty contested, and he has not been that consistent shooting wise watching either. So hopefully that was just like a recent thing. But we have two games left, and the Spurs, I'm not sure they have not played their game. So, unsure if uh, that was the, the deciding factor. But we are 3-5 and five in our last eight. Since that, since the start of that Spurs game that went into overtime, we are 3-5 and five at the worst possible time. That game was right when we had the one seed. We had the lead and we have blown it completely. We have blown two spots. I can't believe it. And the Pelicans could take the three seed from us too. They're still only a game and a half back and we have two games left. So that is just awful. But let's check these box scores, I guess. The first game was a win against the Suns by nine. Copeland drops 34. The Woodsman got 24 for Anderson, 22 for Franz, 19 and 9 for Hollins. Then we lost against the Nuggets, who were sub 500. Jokic had not only a triple double, but also 23 and 20. Come on, man. Franz had 21, Anderson had 19. Then we got destroyed by the Nets. Anderson scores 24, Franz only 7, 2 for 12. Don Payne was 1 for 10. Inconsistencies are showing up here for some reason. Terry Perry had 22. Cam Thomas had 20. Mark Williams had 19. He bounced back by ticking down the Sixers, who were awful. Anderson drops 31. Keldon Johnson and Carney both had 23. Franz had 20 and 12. Hollins had 12 and 14. And Payne had a double double with four blocks as well. Sixers had 19 for Maxi and 15 for Davy and Mitchell. But so let's see if our fate has been decided. We've got two games left. There's three days left on the season. And the Spurs did win. So we are stuck between the three and the four seed. The Pelicans are now one game back from us. And we'll see if this last game matters. Well, we lost. So, another game scoring below 100 points. What is going on with this offense? Somehow, things have gone wrong. Team chemistry is dropping too. Harrow drops 23. Jovic drops 18. So does Bam. The Woodsman got 24 from Franz, 22 from Hollins. And now it's Anderson who scores 5 points. 2 for 11. Why can we not all just get on the same page here? Kelton Johnson at 4. Ah, this is frustrating. And of course the Pelicans happen to have won their game. So if we lose and they win their last game, then they take the three seed from us. We can't watch the full game, but I will simcast it. Or I'll at least sim through April 9th and see if they've already played their game. But the Sumo is literally coming back at the perfect time. And I think with him, you kind of just have to replace him with Carney, I think. I think that is the thing here is that, you know, Carney, he has not been bad this year. He's just been very inconsistent. And having Desumu out there on the court will be a huge, a huge boost for the offense at the very least, which has been the issue recently. So we're going to go to a rotation timeline. So here is our new timeline. We do have Wellington playing small forward only for a couple of minutes because he, Hollins, and Desumu are going to be on the court together for about five-ish minutes total throughout the game and games from here on out. Um, so I pretty much just swapped Carney's minutes with Wellington's and then Wellington's minutes with Desumu's because I want him to play point guard more than Wellington because I think he's a better catch-and-shoot kind of guy than Desumu is. But 
yeah, we pretty much just uh, replaced Carney with Desumu. And uh, we'll take a look at his stats real quick because he has pretty much been deactivated unless we need to bring him back in for whatever reason. So that's our new lineup. And here are the final stats for Carney this year before we even do anything else. So he had 10.7 points per game, 1.6 boards, 1.8 assists, 0.7 steals, shot 39% from the field, 35% from three, and 85% at the line, playing 20 minutes per game, did not draw too many fouls, had a positive plus minus, and yeah, those are his final stats in his rookie season. We'll see if he makes an appearance in the playoffs, but... Probably won't, but I think 81 out of 82 games playing 20 minutes a game is going to be really big for his development. So we have reached the final day of the year, April 10th. We face the Portland Trailblazers on the road. They are below 500, but we have not been very consistent recently, and Desumu has made his return. But on the daily view, the Pelicans are playing the 29 and 52 Clippers, an awful team. So. We really have to win this game. And I'm going to simcast the first half. Because we already watched a game. And losing this game would really be not good for my outlook on the playoffs. Because how poorly we have played in recent couple of weeks. And it looks like they're going to use the second quarter to be up by double digits at the half, or at least by like seven. Third quarter, we're closing the gap a little bit with a big third quarter. But now it's back and forth. The game around 70, 80 points. Oh my god, we're putting together an amazing third quarter. Look at this. Outscoring them by, by 21 there. But now they're closing the gap here in the fourth quarter. And Vancouver holding on. And it looks like we're going to get it done. We win the game. We do have the tiebreaker over the Pelicans. So that is a huge win. 126 to 115. Holland had 26, 6 and 4. 9 for 12. Keldon Johnson at 25, 7 and 4. Anderson at 18. Franz Wagner had 18. Wellington 16. Look at this balance scoring. Desumu, 9 points in his first game back, 3 for 5. Nobody shot poorly besides Payne, but Payne's hurt. What is that? That's not real, is it? Hold on. No, 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 no. Okay, 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 okay. Bruise red forearm, he's fine. Jesus, you cannot scare me like that on the last game of the year, man. Jesus. So we get the three seed. And the MVP is LaMelo Ball. 29, 7, and 11 on the year. Shot 50% from the field and 44% from three. Dario Dragic wins rookie of the year. Jalen Suggs wins six man of the year. And Giannis does win Depoy. I really am curious what criteria they used to pick him over Don Payne. Wallace Nance wins Most Improved Player. Bickerstaff wins Coach of the Year with the Cavaliers. And Brandon Harrison wins Exec of the Year with the Cavaliers too. So, now we advance. All-NBA first team. LaMelo Ball, John Morant, Giannis, Jabari Smith, and Jokic. The second team, Calvin Gordon, Zion, Paolo Bencaro, SGA, who has a broken right leg. Wow, the Spurs. That sucks. They missed Calvin Gordon for a little bit. He got hurt, I think. And then now SGA has a broken leg. Luca also here on the second team. On the third team, it's Dyson Daniels, Josh Skiddy, Evan Mobley, Scotty Barnes, and Anthony Towns. All defensive first team. Don Payne makes the list here, as does Mobley, Giannis Antetokounmpo, Ben Simmons, and Lonzo Ball. All defensive second team. Shadon Sharp, Lamelo, Jaron Jackson Jr., Paolo made it, and Jokic did too. What about Miles Turner? I thought he was the le the leading blocker in the league last time we checked. 
our rookie first team, Dario Dragic, Brent Davis, Malcolm McKinney, Chris Lewis, and Jalen Shepard. So Carney misses out here. And he does not make the second team either. Really? I mean, I guess he was just like a pure scorer, but damn. Dedrick Sloan makes it. Pete Westbrook, Dustin Vincent, Clayton Martin Jr., and Terrence Strickland round out the All-NBA teams. We advance. And we will play the Minnesota Timberwolves in the first round. The three seed versus six seed matchup, the highest seed in the history of our team and the best record in team history as well. Oh, that's right. The Timberwolves have an incredibly tall lineup. Crap. I forgot about them. I forgot about their starting five. Their shortest guy is like 6'6". Six, six. Or 6'8", six, I think, right? Haywood 6'8". Six, Gun Brown is 6'6", six, six, and he's the shortest. Yep. So we have to face them, but across the league, in the Western playing tourney, it's Sacramento, Golden State, Dallas, and Denver. The one seed is the Thunder, obviously. The Spurs got the two. Pelicans at the four and Rockets at the five. And we are obviously playing the six seed over in the Eastern Conference. The play-in teams are the Sound, the Magic, the Wizards, and the Nets. We'll see if the Sound make another run to the finals as a play-in team. But the Cavs got the one seed. Pacers at the two. Okay, interesting. And then Milwaukee at the three. Celtics at the four. Charlotte 5 and Atlanta number 6. We're going to send the play-in tournament real quick. And it looks like Sacramento secures the 8th seed and Golden State secures the 7 in the Western Conference. And over in the East, the Sound did clinch the 7th seed and the Magic are the 8. So, here is your full bracket going into the playoffs. We have our highest record and our highest seed in team history. And we're trying to get to at least the conference championship at this stage. That is at the very least of what we're trying to do here. But that will wrap things up here, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. I'll go over stats and prospects and all that fun stuff at the end of the postseason. So until then, we're going to focus on the playoffs only. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks and see ya.